Hi guys. Like, is this objectively too casual of a video to be filming? Yes, but I was like, damn, I didn't do my Sunday reads. If I don't do it now, I'm not gonna have any light, but I need to take a bath immediately. So we're just like combining the two with this really cool, innovative new angle. Hope you love it. <laughs> um, yes, welcome to Sunday reads. I actually just spent three hours at the Oregon Zoo. I had a hankering to go to the zoo this week. I don't know what it was, what compelled me really, but um, I needed to see a live animal and something just overtook me and I convinced a few friends to go and we went to the Oregon Zoo and it was great. I really love otters. I think they're puppies they remind me so much of spud it was awesome so these are always like kind of sad you know because animals in captivity but it felt good to like feel anything at all so i was like pro the zoo experience portland has a pretty good zoo if you have a baby you should go definitely like lots of babies and children which makes sense um but these are great three hours and then we had sandwiches with our friends and now we're home uh, I have Monday off tomorrow, which is cool, and I'm going to do some bookish things. I'm going to go to a few thrift stores, look for some stuff for Sunnies. But I thought today we could talk about one, like, 2022 booktube reading goals. I think I said previously I wasn't going to do a video like this, but um, I realized as a portion of a Sunday reads, it actually probably makes sense. And then I also just wanted to talk through some of the books I've been reading recently. Okay, so, so, <laughs> um, yeah, 2022 booktube reading goals. I feel like I've been doing this for a while now, like going on two years, maybe a year and a half. I don't really know, but it's been over a year, which is pretty wild numerically i would like to reach 5k by the end of the year i don't know why really it just seems like an attainable milestone so that's something for you to know and what else i would like to read less in general this year i talked about this a little bit previously but um i don't know i just feel like i was only reading 100 books last year because i was I was like close to it and I had never gotten to that high of a metric before and it just seemed fun. So I hit that, don't need to do that again. So I would say like I would read around 50 books and feel really happy about that. That's an intention. Uh, I watched Claire's video and Jalen's video and Alex's video about like YouTube reflections, how they feel about being a part of this little weird online community. And they all had great insightful things to say but i would say like a red thread throughout all of them was like a little bit anxiety about uploading recently um and i feel like i've been kind of experiencing something like that as well even though you probably wouldn't have noticed <laughs> um i'm kind of toying with the idea of like not doing vlogs anymore or not doing as many vlogs or incorporating just vloggy bits into the Sunday reads. I like vlogging for the like emotional aspect of it um, and memory aspect of it and because I think it's fun. And I'm definitely like a ham, right? Like I need attention. I think I'm funny. Um, <laughs> uh, I get a, a kick out of vlogging and uploading it for some reason and i think it's because i'm a ham but it also is just like deeply exposing and like vulnerable at the same time and i'm like am i gonna regret this in a few years a part of me feels like i won't but a part of me is just like anticipating a vulnerability hangover so i don't know i feel like i have to find a different way to move through that in 2022 and maybe quell that anxiety i don't know if that anxiety is even real you know what i mean <sighs> let me know if you know what i'm talking about 
I feel like Hannah knows what I'm talking about. And I'm sure anyone else who voluntarily puts their life online does too, to some degree. But yeah, I don't know. I just like step away sometimes. And I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> like, what am I even doing? Who am I? Why am I talking about books? Who cares? I think there's a balance between going that pessimistic about my contributions to this space and like what my input says and being a complete ham. Yeah. So I don't know, maybe less of me, more structure, less me in my pajamas as I make this video from a literal bathtub. Okay, those are some booktube goals. Let me know what you would like from this channel, I guess. Like, what are you here for? Uh, I just wanna keep having fun. That's my main goal. <laughs> so how can I keep having fun? Does anyone know? Those are my booktube goals, kind of amorphous. Other goals, I'm definitely getting a lot of traction on Sunnies, which is so fun. I'm so excited to roll it out, you guys. My friend Megan, who is designing like the whole brand identity, just sent me like her latest round of updates and it is so like joyful and just cute and I can't wait to see it out in the world. Um, I think it's gonna be a pretty streamlined build out process. Like the, the wood shelves that were essentially adding, adding to the truck bed shouldn't be that hard. And I just have to keep building inventory until then and like sourcing from my own shelves. I actually want to do like a big Sunny's sort through of me calling my shelves and with the intention of adding to inventory for the truck, right? Which I feel like is going to feel a little different than me like donating them to Goodwill or something. So that's a thing. That's a thing. Sunny's is gonna really happen and pop off this spring and summer and I can't wait for you to see. I'm gonna like roll it out once it's all kind of established and more done because we're gonna have some like products for sale. Um, nothing crazy, like a pullover and a water bottle and a hat, you know, typical bookstore merch, but it's looking cute. I can't wait to show you. Okay, so for the books that I've been reading, I'm reading Checkout 19 right now by Claire Louise Bennett. It's my first book I've read by her and it's interesting. Uh, it's interesting. It has like a sense of time woven throughout the book. It's like a very temporal reading experience. The first chapter is from a child's perspective and it's written very childlike and the fidelity of the language and the exploration around like the meaning of books and writing in this unnamed character's life becomes more and more defined and more um defined and refined yeah that's what i'm gonna say so that's been cool i wouldn't say i'm like grabbed hooked obsessed or anything so far uh but i did just get to a place probably 50 pages in where it's feeling more meaty and i'm it's feeling more uh readable i feel like some of the tone i was struggling with when the perspective was from like a very young child and then like a 12 year old i was like oh my god um that's definitely like one of my reading x is reading from a child's perspective i don't know why uh i think it's because it's so much of what i look for in books is writing and uh, sometimes the writing's bad when adult authors try to interpret the world from a child's perspective. I've seen it done really well, but uh, when it's bad, it's bad. So that's Checkout 19. That's Claire Louise Bennett. I also just started last night Milk, Blood, Heat, which is a collection of short stories. I forget the author's name off the top of my head, but I'm gonna put it right here. Checked it out from the library on the Libby app. And they're all, set in florida which i love hello i'm a florida girl and the first story was really compelling about um a suicide that took place in a friend group of like 13 year olds it didn't feel super set in florida yet which is like the main reason i picked up the book i would say but uh it was a really interesting character study of like a young coming of age 13-esque 
friendship between two girls so i'm liking that i have really been liking having a short story collection to go to at night so i can read that before i go to bed and not feel like i'm not immersed in a story you know like a novel i just want to like be awake for it oh my god can you see me hello i'm back i'm back so that's a short story collection i'm reading and then i also just finished five tuesdays in winter by lily king and i really liked it another set of short stories that felt very connected by place a lot of them were set in the northeast i have i felt snow i felt summer sea salt vibes i felt cape cod maine you know very much so new england energy from them and i think lily king is a really great writer i really liked writers and lovers and this short story collection was no different super solid honestly I don't think it'll stay with me for very long but i remember each story feeling pretty cinematic and plucked from life they were all like very grounded and felt like you're observing someone kind of um so i like that I'm really glad i saw otters at the zoo today you guys it was really fun i really recommend going to the zoo <laughs> yeah kind of a boring week i hope you uh have a good one no movies to report on this week. I just watched some TV. I started watching uh, The Righteous Gemstones. That has a new season coming out too, which is like a dramedy set in the South about a mega church. And it's written by Danny McBride and John Goodman's in it. And the guy from, ugh, what is that show called? With the guy with the curly hair and they're like stoner burnouts, whatever. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, but it's so funny and like it has such like a rich um, context to mine for all of the specifics around like southern culture and mega church culture like mega church christian scary culture that i've just like loved it if you've ever been to a cult mega christian church give me a peace sign baby <laughs> okay hope you had a good week I'm sorry that I'm a floating head, but we had to get it done. This is the last light. Can you feel it going down? I bet the quality of light has changed within this video alone. Have a good week. I love you. Goodbye.